Our text this morning comes from uh, the, uh, the first reading in Acts chapter 8. Uh, let me just uh, review for you verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I know this is going to seem a little disconnected, but it's not my problem, because it was my idea in the first place. Okay, so, uh, when I was uh, still in high school, I... um, I got a job as a, a porter in a men's clothing store. Now, you know, a porter is basically a janitor it, and does whatever he's told. That's kind of the way it was in there. So uh, when the tailor was done working on something, I had to put it in the steam press and get it ready for delivery. And when there wasn't any of that to do, I was supposed to um, sweep up in the store uh, to, you know, pick up any debris or dust or whatever. And if that was done, then, you know, sometimes I would have to go. I don't know what it is about salesmen, but for some reason, when they go in the, in the closet where all the shoes are, they just go, you know, all over the place with them. And somebody had to put them back in boxes and put them where they belong. And that, as it turned out, was supposed to be me. Now, here's the problem. When business got slow, none of that stuff needed to be done. Well, I mean, you know, you can sweep up every little bit, but there's not going to be uh, a lot of need for you to sweep up five or six times in a couple of hours. So I didn't have a lot to do. And then the manager would see me sitting and he'd start fussing because he was paying me. For some reason, he never fussed at the salesman. I don't know why not, but I, it was easier to fuss at me. I was only 16. You know, what are you going to do? Uh, and he just... Yes, fussed at me because he was paying me to do nothing. And I said, well, everything that you've told me to do, I've already done. So just tell me what you want me to do and I will go do it. Except I didn't know what to do until he told me. And as it turned out, he didn't know what to do either because we ran out of stuff to do. So it was, uh, you know, just a difficult moment. And well, I mean, you've all had jobs, you know what I mean? So here's poor Philip in kind of a similar place, uh, the the Holy Spirit had uh, taken him up to Samaria. It was before this reading. And in Samaria, he he, uh, taught people and baptized them and such. And there was some difficulty with that uh, because everything wasn't going the way it was supposed to because the Holy Spirit was busy not telling him what was going on. So he didn't know what else to do. So then... Uh, at this time, uh, an angel of the Lord, it says, told him to go to, uh, down to the Gaza Road, which is a, a, a pretty healthy walk from Samaria. And um, he, he was supposed to go uh, next to this Ethiopian eunuch who was riding in a fancy chariot, apparently. And, and this guy is a... Uh, a fairly powerful official in the in the land of Ethiopia. He's the the treasurer or some such thing, and he himself is uh, coming from Jerusalem. He'd been there to worship, it says, and he was on his way home. And so Philip was supposed to go and uh, go with this guy, or at least that's what the angel told him. So it, he, he really didn't know anything about the where he was supposed to go until some element of divinity told him. Uh, he didn't know why he was going because you don't know until you get there. And, and he didn't know even when he was supposed to do anything because somebody had to tell him to go. Uh, but see, when he, when he got there, he knew the very basics of how he was supposed to act only because faith and compassion that the same Holy Spirit uh, put in him, uh, showed him what to do, or told him what to do, depending on circumstances. It wasn't anything fancy. Uh, he would talk to people and he'd baptize them, and that was that was it because he he knew how to do that. 
So I, you can kind of see he, he's really not uh, any better informed than anybody else. So, uh, so I, I mean, well, have you figured it out for yourself? I guess is the big question. Do you, I know you want to serve God. Uh, I suppose you might qualify and say as long as it's not too difficult <laughs> or uh, beyond your own perceived skill. Uh, if you know what to do, you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. Uh, the question is, do you know? Do you know where? Do you know why? Do you know when? Well, the answer is no. Not until it's uh, you find yourself there. Uh, or um, are you more or less like Philip? I, I would say probably yes, because you don't know the same kind of things he didn't know. And uh, unless God needs you to do something or say something, and he needs to give you some circumstance uh, and, and use the spirit to key you into action. And, and uh, well, and you don't even necessarily know when that is. Understand, Philip is a minister of the faith. Uh, it turns out there's a little question about whether this is Philip the deacon, who is the one we heard from last before this, or Philip the apostle, because uh, he obviously is uh, somebody that worked with Jesus, but I don't know which one it is, because it doesn't say. Uh, but obviously he has some idea what's going on, and either one of those two guys, like I said, they're ministers of the faith, They, but they didn't choose anything until... Uh, he, well, Philip eventually saw someone that needed him because the spirit took him there and showed him that. And, and, uh, and so are, are you at least willing to answer an obvious call? I, I mean, that, that would be hard enough. Uh, Philip was shown what he was supposed to do and he went and did it. But are, are you going to do that? Or are you going to question, is that safe? Is that Difficult? Is it something you can be confident about? And I would say more than likely, if you're like me, you're not so sure at all. But, you know, it can't really be so that Philip knew what to do or else he wouldn't have had the Holy Spirit and the Holy Angel dragging him around all over the place. He was carried by the Holy Spirit to Samaria. Uh, See, and, and I can tell you, uh, Philip, being a Jewish guy, would never have gone there ever because the Samaritans were considered outcasts and lowlifes and uh, it, they just wouldn't have gone there. But he did because the Holy Spirit took him there. Right? So, so then uh, he was coaxed to the side of this Gentile eunuch. There's two problems there. First of all, he's a Gentile. He's not a Jew either. Uh, which is even worse than being a Samaritan. Uh, you know, basically they assume godlessness, except this guy was a believer of some kind because he had been going to the temple to worship. The other problem is he's a eunuch, which means he's been maimed. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, court officials were done that way so that they were uh, less aggressive and more likely to be loyal. But this guy's not a very likely stop for a normal Jewish guy either. Even somebody who's working for Jesus is just not a likely possibility. But there he was anyway. And then he was off to Asitus, which is another city up the coast, another particularly long walk, except it says the Holy Spirit took him there. And he found himself there. Apparently that was necessary too, because he was evangelizing all the way up the coast. Okay, is any of that by choice? Well, you have to say, not really. <laughs> it was God being busy. God was being busy with him and he was getting him to do stuff. He wasn't really involved in what he was supposed to do until he got there. Does he know better than you then? Well, you have to say, not really. <laughs> not really. Not uh, not on where he was supposed to go to work. He didn't know what to do for this Ethiopian guy either. Not until he got there. He didn't even know there was a guy. And then the, the, then he's told to go up by the place and listen to him. So he's told to go over and he, he knows about Jesus. And he answered questions, which any of you could do. 
the eunuch is reading scripture and he doesn't understand it. So Philip answers his questions. And then the guy uh, after Philip was discussing things with him and who knows how long that was. Doesn't really say how long he was with them. Could have been days. And they happened to pass by some water. Uh, and you notice that it said this is a desert place where they were picked up. So there isn't any water there. But uh, at some place along the road, they ran into water, and the eunuch knew enough to ask about baptism, and, and uh, Philip knew enough to do a baptism, so he did that. So, so he knew to teach him, and he knew to answer his questions, and he knew to baptize him, but, but he didn't know when, where, or why any of that. That was God's problem. Now, you've heard of Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that's why you're here. You know he was crucified and rose from the dead. That stuff is well within your understanding of things. Uh, if someone asked you about that, you could answer for it. You could say, yep, that happened. This is what it looked like, which is really all Philip did. He was looking at Isaiah 53. That's what that passage from Isaiah was, which is about Christ's death. And he just went from there and explained it. Uh, you could do that. If, uh, if I um, had to guess, the Holy Spirit has helped you perhaps without even realizing it sometimes to comfort somebody by word or by deed on behalf of Jesus who is working in your life. Actually, I don't even have to imagine that very much because it turns out I've seen most of you do that very thing myself at one time or another. And, and don't suppose that the circumstances that set you in a place to do that stuff are remotely accidental because it's just like Philip. You didn't know where and you didn't know when and you didn't know why until it was in your face because the Spirit brought you there because God does that. You have the very same Holy Spirit in you that Philip had. And the Spirit leads you, enlightens you for work in the kingdom, and even helps you with what you should do or what you should say because you may not know your own self, which is why our uh, confidence lags a little bit. But your God-given faith actually inspires you to do the things that are blessings of God in this world. In Jesus' name, it's already happening. Your faith does works because the Spirit is in you. You can have full and complete confidence that your God is doing these things because he, he, he loves you and he loves the people that you're talking to. And, and he does it all in you and for you because that's the path of Christ crucified and risen. He wants that for people that are with you. And he loves you and he entrusts you with these things and his faith and his spirit work them in you, whether you're paying attention or not. You can have confidence in that because he promised he's doing it. And as I said, I've seen him do it in you. Did, did you notice that God uh, set this Ethiopian fella onto Christ crucified first thing. He's reading uh, a scroll of Isaiah, which probably was a uh, right expensive because people didn't spend a lot of time reading in those days. It cost money to have the scroll because people didn't write stuff down much and paper was expensive and, and you had to be pretty well educated to write these things in the first place. But this guy was wealthy. He probably purchased the thing and he gets stuck at Isaiah 53, which is about Christ crucified. But he doesn't understand it. A, a God started there with this Good Friday stuff. And, and that's, see, ultimately, Christ crucified and Christ risen is why anything matters in this world at all. If it weren't for those things, there'd be no forgiveness. There'd be no new life. There'd be no comfort in the face of suffering and death. There'd be no encouragement to do what is good, even though there's a great deal of discouragement in the world from that. So you can start there. That's what the world needs to do. Start with Christ crucified. How do I know that? Well, because God does. 
That's what he gave Philip to work with, with this guy. That's what he gave Philip to work with, with the Samaritans. That's what he gave everybody who has ever worked for him to work with. You know Christ crucified. You know Christ risen. Because God has put that information in you. And how do you know to start there? Well, because God does. In fact, he started talking about Christ crucified all the way back in Genesis 3. When he told the world, they told you, told Adam and Eve that one would come from them and he would be struck in the heel by the offspring of Satan and he would crush his head. That is what happened to you at the cross. Start with Christ crucified. If you ever wonder what to do, start there. Start with Christ crucified. Start with Christ risen from the dead because all things of the gospel come from there. It's what happened to you and that's what happens to everyone who comes to faith, to, to know Christ, to be forgiven, to be loved, to be known, to have eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.